because of time, I want to make sure I go over the indictment because it is very, very important. And I'm gonna start with kidnapping. And the judge went over by force, threat, or deception. Force, threat, or deception. Remove Ashley Biggs from the place where she was found or restrain her liberty for the purpose of facilitating the commission of a felony. Well, what have the state put forth beyond a reasonable doubt for these elements? Force, threat, or deception. Force or deception. Deception to remove Ashley from the place where she was found was that phone call the defendant made to lure her to 640, to the back of 647 West Turkey Foot Lake Road. That deceptive phone call, that is where was the deception to get her there. Now, force, force to restrain her liberty. And this is or, I'm just saying how we prove all of it. Force is the taser, the taser that you can see on that table. And if you remember Dr. Kohler and BCI agent Soraya testified that when those barbs hit you, your muscles will stiffen up and you will drop. Dr. Kohler actually described it in her autopsy report as an electrical restraint. It was referred to that multiple times. That is the force that was used to restrain Ashley Biggs's liberty for the purpose of committing or facilitating the commission of a felony. And that was either to beat Ashley Biggs, that zip tie around her neck, the beating, the felonious assault, the murder that was committed, the taking of her car since they knew they were going to, that was going to happen and take her car to the cornfield, the aggravated robbery, the commission of any of those felonies. So they restrained her liberty, or by deception, removed her from where she was for the purpose of facilitating a felony, okay? Now, I talked about the taser type device. The top two photos are the taser doors. And you have these photos that was found on the scene at the murder scene. The bottom one with the, four, the number four placard, that was the taser cartridge that those doors came off of. And that was found under Ashley Biggs' body in the back of the car. The last one, the string, that is the barb. That's a barb. That is what would have been planted in Ashley Biggs' back. And then read the Dr. Kohler's autopsy protocol. She was tased in the back. In the back. How do you get tased in the back if you're not trying to leave? She was tased in the back, and that would have been the barb. That was used to restrain her liberty. The aggravated robbery. The deadly weapon or attempting to inflict serious physical harm. That's the beating. The deadly weapon is the taser that could be used, and they did use it as a deadly weapon. And the aggravated robbery is stealing her car. They took her car. Now, those are the predicate offenses, and I wanted to go over those first before we get to the aggravated murder. Now, one murder you'll see is prior calculation and design. I went over purposefully about how they talked about it, and they, she knew what was going to happen in the prior calculation and design. She used the word plan out of her own mouth caused the death of Ashley Biggs. Based on her testimony, Chad's testimony, her recorded statement, what was brought to the scene and used, the nature of the phone call all shows the prior calculation design. She knew what was gonna happen and that was their plan. I wanna go over the next aggravated murder because that's more of the felony murder and that they caused her death while attempting to commit or fleeing after committing a felony. So if you find that they caused her death while committing or attempting to commit the kidnapping or aggravated robbery, <coughs> then we've proved beyond a reasonable doubt this aggravated murder. I went over kidnapping and aggravated robbery. So if they did both of those and caused her death while doing that, 
That is aggravated robbery, and the state has proved it beyond a reasonable doubt. The next one is murder, that that was their purpose. They purposely caused the death of Ashley Biggs. That is what they went there for, and I will not rehash the reasons, the phone call, things of that nature. I do want to dif differentiate that from the next murder. Um, this is felony murder. There's no purpose in this one. If you see, you don't have an element of purpose. Is that one, they did cause the death of Ashley Biggs and it was as a proximate result of them committing or attempting to commit a felony. So as a proximate result of them committing or attempting to commit a felony, they caused her death. And that's imp important that you don't see the word purpose in this murder. And that's the felony murder you will have on your, um, on your verdict form. That's the felony murder. So if you find that as a proximate result of them trying to commit a felonious assault, and you heard Dr. Kohler state that the beating before the zip tie um, was grave injury, uh, in her, and you have the disc from her, from her testimony. You have where uh, the, the bruise, the deep bruising, the um, serious physical harm, the beating caused itself. So if you find that it was a felonious assault or the kidnapping, again, the kidnapping or the aggravated robbery, while the defendant and Chad Cobb committed those crimes and as a proximate result, not their purpose, but as a proximate result, Ashley Viggs died, then that is murder. That is very important, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Now, as I stated in the beginning, Ashley Biggs was in for a pen. Erica Stefanko was in for a penny. Erica Stefanko was in for a pound. She committed this murder with Chad Cobb. She was there with him every step of the way. From the beginning, the planning. From the middle, the execution. And the end, the potential cover-up. Once you all go back and listen to and look over the evidence and testimony, the state is confident that you will find the defendant, Erica Stefanko, guilty of all the crimes charged in the indictment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Attorney Easter. Uh, Desiree, if you don't mind. Thank you so much. I will just note for the record that it's 10. All right, District well. Attorney Easter finishing up her closing argument to the jury, very passionate, ending it with in for a penny, in for a pound. She really relied on that secret recording with the defendant, basically admitting portions of this crime, played several excerpts from that, and made the argument that she was there from the beginning, there from the planning stages, therefore the actual crime that was committed, and was there for the ride home, basically the cover-up in those moments after the murder. How did... Chad, get a ride. Well, she was there with her vehicle, her SUV, and they went together with the four kids to that remote, dark spot. Um, all right, let's get uh, your, uh, uh, um, your assessment here uh, quickly. Vinu Varghese has been with us the whole time, and we haven't gotten you to, but Vinu, pretty good job there, huh? What do you think? I think that... Uh you know, the tape, and you've mentioned it, the tape is what's going to uh, sink her. Otherwise, you have a case filled with reasonable doubt. Um, just a couple things I wanted to, to bring up for, for the people that watch your network regularly. What Ohio does here is actually extraordinary, is what it should be everywhere else in the country and in the federal courts. The prosecution goes first in summation and defense gets to go. In the federal courts, prosecution gets to go. Defense gets uh, goes next, and they get a rebuttal. So I think Ohio actually has it right in terms of getting it um, done correctly and providing the best chance for a defendant to get a fair trial. Hmm. Absolutely. Um, and we're going to hear the other half of it um, coming up. The defense attorney O'Brien will be addressing this jury on behalf of the defendant, Erica Stefanko. Uh, we're going to step aside, take a break. 